Okay, let's get going. I'm going to call this one Eddie's End. Uh, but we, I have to finish up a little bit with Richie's, Richie's stories and all. I know what the bookie part of it and everything. Uh, one of his biggest customers, one have to call, was Mayo. And uh, Mayo would, would bet thousand dollars a game and maybe he bet eight games on, on Sunday and I said to Richie how could you stay in that kind of pressure eight thousand dollars being bet and his answer to me is it's no problem all I want to do is break even win four and lose four if I do that four and four I'm up 400 with the VIG, where Mayo has to pay that 10% extra on the ones that he lost. I'm up 400, so that was the answer. And uh, I gotta turn that darn light on. Now you'd say, why am I concerned about the light? I need it for the green screen. It don't, you didn't see the difference here. But it, for the green screen, I, I need it. The other one to finish up is the... Remember that edition problem video that I did? Well, it was Richie that got in a problem with that. I told, showed him to him and he, he used it on a guy in a bar. And the guy added it up, he'd come to 5,000. And the answer's 4,100. And it, Richie laughed, everybody in the bar laughed. And the guy kept insisting that it's 5,000. And Richie's laughing and everybody's laughing and the guy's getting madder and madder. And uh, insisting that he couldn't see the and where the mistake was and everything and finally the guy he had it he was embarrassed and everything and he, he went crazy and and uh, a small riot and uh, Richie says why did I ever show him that thing I didn't <laughs> so it was kind of funny that was kind of funny so that finished up them couple of that I wanted to tell about Richie and you know you heard about the end when Richie passed and oh and another one uh, where I said that uh, Richie took care of people buried him and everything and, and uh, he didn't talk about it and all I knew about it one just a one one uh, and he didn't tell me, somebody else told me he buried Rags. Rags. They know who Rags was around here, in that area, but uh, I never knew Rags, and Richie never told me nothing about Rags. Somebody else told me that he did that. He was a good guy. Okay. Eddie. Eddie, just a couple of stories, and then we'll lead up to the end we'd go fishing out in the I had, didn't have a big boat we'd go into the mud hole Eddie would encourage me to do all kind of things just like with that with that truck to Nova Scotia so we go to the mud hole with a smaller boat and all and we had trouble with the boat it was a good day by luck it was a good day and, and uh, we had the big tuna on and everything. And one guy would have had a reel that big. And we had little reels. And one, when he did, dove to the bottom of this monster tuna and everything, uh, then we said, uh, we have no confidence. It finally it broke off and he had a reel that big. I, our thinking was, we have no confidence in our equipment after that you know and guys staggering around all day long a couple different guys 
fighting and fish and all. Then we had trouble with the boat, and Eddie slept a lot. He would do that, and all. He he didn't care. He'd swim back, swim back. I can't swim at all. He's gonna swim back, and he meant it. He must he was a long distance swimmer or something. He told me, and I didn't know what to believe with Eddie. You had to believe though. Uh, with his goings on and all. He says one time he was swimming around Perth Danbury and a guy c came to rescue him and he said, no, he don't want to ride. He's just swimming. I don't know. Eddie was a character, boy. Gee. And smart. He taught at the school. He taught the, uh, the young guys learning the trades. He taught at the school. He ran the jobs. Whew. Pedal to the metal with everything. He, he was something. Another thing, another thing was uh, he would go in the woods and take a six pack with him, drink the six pack, fall asleep, and not come out. And he did that a lot. He did it with me, he did it with others. So uh, I, I remember New York State, Ellenville, New York, we used to go over there. And, uh, dark at six o'clock or five o'clock or whatever. Here it's seven, eight. Where is he? He's sleeping. And then come out, wake up, come out in the dark two or three hours later. He did that regularly. He did it here by my at my house here. He did it to me in in, in uh, Ellenville, New York. He did it a lot. Now, when we went to Nova Scotia, and when I come back, I had all this work in front of me. I built the house, this the house that we live in, and all that digging and everything. And I had a tremendous amount of work ahead of me. And uh, I had to do it. And, and, and then the family, we all pitched in and we worked, so Eddie was going out west. He graduated from deer to elk and moose and that, oh, no, I guess elk. Elk was the biggest thing, I suppose. And some other big animal, I don't know, but he'd have pictures and he begged me to come on out west with him. And I had too much work to do, I couldn't go out west. So, uh, and he, he, went on in the hunting life and killed all kind of big animals and all. But getting back to falling asleep in the woods and everything, he did that quite a bit, quite a bit, quite often. So the culmination of this, of this story is uh, why well, I'll tell you the last, last very end part of it. I'm in the sportsman center, and there's a guy standing. My, I'm there with my wife, and the guy's standing there. And I thought he worked for the sportsman center, but this guy I knew, and but I didn't recognize him. Time had gone by; we've been separated. I'm at CW, and they're going on with their life. They're hunting out west. They're, Hunting here and there, New York State back, and all that sort of stuff. And uh, so I'm in a sportsman center, and this guy's standing here, and I think he's a worker. And he don't realize that I don't recognize him. And finally, I look, oh, Joe, it's Joe, another mutual friend. Not that close, but a mutual friend. And I say to my wife, Doris, this is Joe. He was with Eddie the night that Eddie died. And now, and Joe, we greeted each other and everything. We didn't even hardly talk too much about that night. So I don't even know the details. It's almost seemed improper like and everything, but uh, what happened is Joe and Eddie Went to New York State. I don't know if it was for the day or the weekend or or what. 
Hunt. And uh, they went in and hunted for the evening. And uh, Joe come out. He's sitting in a truck waiting for Eddie, waiting for Eddie. Oh no, we, I mean, past the time, it's dark, pitch dark and everything. No Eddie. Joe's figuring that's, he fell asleep, he drank beer or something and he, and he just didn't come out. And uh, he waited and waited and looking at his watch and everything. God almighty, where in the world is he? He's not coming out, not coming out. And all, then it reaches the, the crazy time where this is, this is a, because you just don't go off into the woods and, and everything. It's, it's, it's a job in the dark and everything. And uh, finally Joe says, I gotta go in here and see what's going on. And Joe starts on his journey into the woods trying to see if he can find Eddie's tree stand. So as he's walking, there was snow on the ground, which made it easier. And as he's walking, he's got one set of tracks in, no set of tracks out. And when he got to the tree, he found Eddie dead in the tree. And the story is that he was dead in the tree. He wasn't, he didn't fall out on the ground or what, he was dead in the tree. And uh, that was the end. That was the end of Eddie. That's the way Eddie died. He lived his life with the pedal to the metal. All the time. All the time. And I kind of was lucky that uh, he was good to me, though. He was good to me and Richie and, and others. He had a lot of good, lot of good things about him. But he was on a wild side. He was on a wild side. And uh, may God have mercy on his soul. May he rest in peace. That's what they say, right? Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Eddie. Rest in peace, Rich. And that was the story of a really t two of my best friends and buddies. In the, in my that during my working life, like you know, and I separated from them, went to CW. And they went on doing what they were doing and, and trying to earn a living and, and living their lives. We run into different paths at times and sometimes that path takes you in another direction and you'd have to say that that's what happened to me. I was going along, this was the path. And Somewhere along the line, I come to a Y in a road, and uh, I took the other turn. Okay, 